Sacrifice to God as a contrite spirit, a crushed and humble heart, God will not spurn. Ada pegum piri et in epochini asuntosion, de the volumi vivo by Jerusalem. Then when you delight in proper oblation and sacrifice and hope for all offerings, then shall they offer as a body altar and have mercy on me. Υπότιτλοι AUTHORWAVE 
conquered a flawless diamond. Through fasting he must also work in Thank you. 
Oh.
έφραξαν στόματα λεόντων, έσβεσαν δύναμη πυρός, έφυγαν στόματα μαχαίρας, ενεδυνάμωθησαν από ασθενείας, γεννήθησαν ισχυροί εν πολέμων, παρεμβολάς έκλειναν αλφρίων, έλαβαν γυναίκες εξ αναστάσεως τους νεκρούς αυτούς, άλλοι δε επιβανίστησαν, ού προσδεξάμενοι την απολύτρωση, είναι ακρίτωνος αναστάσεως τύφωση. Έτεροι δε, επεγμών και μαστίγων πήραν έλαγων, έτητε δεσμών και φυλακής, ελιθάστησαν, επρίστησαν, επειράστησαν, εν θόνο μαχαίρας απέθανον, περιήλθον εμφυλωτές, εν εγγύρι δέμαση, ιστερούμενοι, πληγόμενοι, κακουκούμενοι, όλου και άξιος ο κόσμος, εν ερημίες πλανόμενοι και όρεση και σπηλαίης, και τες σοπές της γης. Και ούτε πάντες μαρτυρηθέντες δια της πίστεως, ούτε κομίσαντο την Επαγγελία του Θεού περί ημών κρήτων και προβλεψαμένων, ή να μη χωρίς ημών τελειωτώσει. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our fathers, for you are righteous in all things you have done for us. The reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Let us be attentive. Brethren, by faith Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to share ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. And what more shall I say? For time is with Jehu to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel of the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, received promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign enemies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release, that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and scourging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering over deserts and mountains, and in bands and caves of the earth. And of all, the, all these who dwelt attested by the faith did not receive what was promised, since God had foreseen something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made permanent.
today for the church. And, uh, and I have, uh, uh, again, from the very beginning, uh, uh, venerated icons as we have here. And today is the day that, uh, believe it or not, that there was a time uh, in, the, in the 8th century, uh, around 770, like that, uh, there was an emperor uh, who said that icons don't belong in the church, that we should not have icons, because they said, uh, if you have icons, you're worshiping, or, or uh, it's like an idol, they, they said. And the church had to, uh, had to answer that. Why do we have icons? And they, uh, they said, well, you can't have icons, but the Old Testament said that you cannot, uh, you cannot have lay, uh, an image and to, and to look at that image and to uh, look, when we look at the image of Christ, we worship Christ, but when we look at the saints, we, we venerate them. We, we, in other words, we honor the saints. We don't worship the saints, but we honor, we honor the saints and worship the Lord, God. So it was a long, long time, it was about 90 years, uh, that, uh, that there were no icons in the church. They came in and took all the icons out, everything, you didn't have the equinostasis, you didn't have anything like that. And, and, and the church had to answer that, why do we have icons? The whole idea is icons because we are on the cross, first of all. No, before Jesus came into the world, we should not have icons, we should not have anything to, to worship through, through uh, paintings or anything like that. No, we should not. But Jesus came into the world, and the reason they said in the Old Testament is because we never saw God. In other words, nobody saw God, so what, what can you look at and, uh, and, and uh, again, to, uh, to venerate, to, you know, to look at it, and to uh, understand God? And that was so. But Jesus came into the world. Jesus came into the world. And we know who Jesus is, and Jesus is God, and we have and see the image of God, which is Jesus. So we can look at images, because we know who God is. Jesus is the second person of God in the, in the, in the Trinity, Father, Son, He is the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, after a while, there became an emperor who came in, and his, uh, his, uh, the, the prince, the, the queen, uh, uh, Theodora, her name was. Theodora, again, uh, again uh, allowed the icons into the church, and they started coming back in, and they were painting icons and, and all that kind of thing. And then there was another time that they stopped it. Another king came in after that. They stopped it for a little while, and then we, they brought back the icons uh, uh, to the church. So we have icons, and why? Because when we look at icons, let's look at this one so everybody can see this one here. We, we, we look and see, and again, being human beings, we have all our senses that we can see. The colors, uh, we can see that, uh, we can see that who that is. That's Mary, the mother of God, and she's holding her son, for she gave birth to the son. And icons, I'm not just drawing, by the way, we don't call iconographers painters. They're not painters, they are called iconographers. They, 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 they draw a, a life. Uh, it, it's not like a painting. It's, a, it's, it's what you call, uh, they draw the image of the person. So let me just show you why, uh, and even icons, when they, when, when actually it's supposed to, uh, when you, when uh, an iconographer, iconographer uh, puts the brush uh, to the to the canvas, he's supposed to be praying all the time, and that's what they do in monasteries. And some, many of other iconographers, they pray when they do it, and when they feel the spirit, they'll put the brush in and start painting. So uh, again, so that's the way, and that that gives this thing such a quality, a spiritual quality. And here we have again how they how they are how they are drawn onto the canvas. And they all have a scheme too. Even the colors. We can see the colors are very are red and blue. And here we have her in, in the red. And she 
she's holding the Christ who she bore. He is holding her lovingly. She's looking at him. Uh, excuse me, he's looking at her because she represents us, mankind. She's not looking at the sun. This is intentional. Why is she not looking at the sun? Because she bore Christ not for herself, of course, of course, of course that's her son, and for herself, but she bore Christ mostly for us, for the people. Because she was told she was going to suffer. So she's not looking at him as if and she's holding him as a mother would hold her son. She's doing that and not looking at him because she's looking at us. As a matter of fact, you can see, and I mentioned this before, the eyes come and it looks like she's looking at all of us. Which she is. She's looking at all of us and praying for us. There's other things when they paint. I remember as a child, I looked at that and I said, what is that? It didn't look right to me. And uh, I, I enjoyed the, uh, the Western church, which I still do. Uh, they have a three dimension. In other words, you can see them. Uh, you can, they, they, it's a full dimension of, of who they are, but not, this is a flat dimension. We, these paintings are flat. They're not drawn as if, uh, as that we are seen and have a third dimension uh, quality by it. They're flat, why? Because that is to draw us into, into the eye into the kingdom, the spiritual world. In other words, more so of the spiritual world of which the icons represent. They, they represent the spiritual world and we're drawn into it. A few other things with the icon, in this particular one, there are a lot of differences. This again, the star here, is to show of uh, her virginity. Uh, we have here, her, her eyes are, are again focused on us. The nose is much longer. Why is the nose a little much longer with uh, the same Papa and the, and the Christ? Because, the, as we say, sweet smelling incense. They're sweet in, their, in the, who they are. The lips are small. Why? Because they don't talk, 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 talk. They are silent. In other words, the silence to show us that silence is, is, uh, is a virtue in itself. And, it's, uh, and you can see how he's, uh, he's uh, caressing her and she is uh, holding her son, of uh, which, uh, uh, which again, uh, she, uh, she loves, of course, but bears him for us. He's holding the scroll here, which is the Bible. So if you look at that, there's so much that can be said that can, can be about the icon. And uh, again, all these wonderful things, the colors and the way we see them, icons again show us uh, this, the, the, the world beyond us, which is the spiritual world which is the heavenly world. So we have icons back in the church. And when, after 90 years of fighting, uh, arguing with, uh, you know, uh, uh, writing books and all that, finally uh, icons were allowed back in the church, 8th century, and, uh, and now we have the icons uh, back in the church with the Ponastasis and the saints and the Romans. This day, the first, the first Sunday of Lent, is dedicated to the return of the icons into the church. It's called Orthodox Sunday, uh, again, to honor uh, the, the, the rightness of having icons in the church. So in a little while, we're going to have a service that we're, we're going to go around the church again, as we do every year. Uh, if you have a you can join us. We can have uh, four stations that we will have a procession. If you have an icon, you wish to join us. The children will join us. We'll, we'll walk around the procession. Anybody else, if you have an icon, you want to join us, join us. But you can stay in your seats and, uh, and we will uh, have the procession of the holy icons of the great church of the Lord. May God bless you.
Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, from whom I am the first. I also believe that this is truly your pure body and that this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me, and forgive my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, and word and deed, known and unknown, and make me worthy without condemnation to forsake the view of your misery, for the forgiveness of sins and for life eternal. Amen. How shall I, who am unworthy, enter into the splendor of your saints? If I dare to enter into the bridal chamber, my clothing will, will accuse me, since it is not a wedding garment. And being bound up, I shall be cast out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Let's look at the announcement of the Greetings to the Sheriff of Jerusalem, who means, Prima mi genito, I get back to the Apple and Asia, Nina Met, Alice, Kata, Sinke, I get more chickies, take a song of those days, Arabona, Melus, Joyce, and Vasilia, and me in that of Proscalaster, Totero, Agathon, Esri, Interspe, and the Kirio in a bit of the Sotiria. Του δείχνου σου το μυστικό, σήμερα η Γέρμανο, την ολόκληρη παράδα τη Βουλή, κάτι σε κρίσιμο, το μυστήριο λίγο. Ού φίλοι μα η δόση, ο καθάπερο Ιούδα, αλλά ο μυστή ομολογό, μυστή τη μου κύριε, εν τη βασιλεία σου.
precious Christ our God, for you are young, well, are pleased to stand upon the cross in the flesh. For as in the divine, deliver those when you were fashioned from the Deliver those who you have fashioned from the bondage of the enemy. Therefore, in thanksgiving, we say to you, you will fill all things with joy, the Savior, when you came to save the world. Have mercy, O God, O so God, according to your great mercy, we pray you hear us in the mercy. Again, we pray for the protection of this holy church, this city, and every city and town from rats, famine, pestilence, earthquake, flood, fire, sword, fort, fire, and invasion, civil strife, and accidental death, that our good and loving God may be merciful gracious and favorable to us that he may that he may turn and keep from us all wrath of sin and sickness and deliver us from his just rebuke and have mercy on us hear us O god of our savior the hope of all those who live everywhere on earth and those who are out Receive, be gracious for our sins, Master, and have mercy on us. Lord, you are a merciful, loving God, and to you we give glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever and unto the ages of ages. As the prophets beheld, as the apostles have taught, as the church has received, as the teachers have declared, as the world has agreed, as grace has shown forth, as truth has been revealed, as falsehood has been dispelled, as wisdom has become manifest, as Christ the Lord. Thus we declare, thus we affirm, thus we proclaim Christ our true God and honor his saints in words, writings, thoughts, sacrifices, churches, and holy icons. On the one hand, worshiping and reverencing Christ as God and Lord, and on the other, honoring the saints as true servants of the, of the same Lord of all, and offering them proper veneration. This is the faith of the apostles. This is the faith of the fathers. This is the faith of the Orthodox. This is the faith on which the world is established. Therefore, with fraternal and filial love, we praise the heralds of the faith, those who with glory and honor have struggled for the faith. And we say, in the chambers of Orthodoxy, faithful emperors, most holy patriarchs, hierarchs, teachers, martyrs, and confessors, may your memory be eternal. Eonia in Limi of Don. Eonia in Limi of Don. May their memory be eternal. Let us beseech the Lord. May, may, that we, that we may be instructed and strengthened by the trial and struggle of these saints, which they endure for the faith, even unto death, and by their teaching and treated that entreating that we may to the end and imitate their godly life. May we be, be deemed worthy of obtaining our requests through the, the mercy and grace of the great and first hierarch Christ our God. Through the intercessions of his holy, glorious lady, the Anathopos, and of the Virgin Mary, the divine angels, and all the saints.
praise him who rose from the tomb and is the author of life. For having vanquished death by death, he bestowed upon us victory and forgiveness. So I believe one day 
that uh, the Protestants will recognize that, most of them, and they'll start coming back, start coming back, probably to the Roman Church, uh, from where they were split, and then again, uh, one day, they will realize again, uh, where, and then we will be talking together with the East and the West, and it will be one church again. We were for a thousand years. And there was a persecution for a thousand years. And then, and then the split began because we did not together speak of who Christ is in truth. We did it individually or separately. Can't do that. We're one in God, one in Christ. He said, when you gather together, you will be, and you all agree on who I am, of the truth of the church and the faith. When you do that, then the truth will come to you. Then I will, I will put my stamp of the Holy Spirit upon what you have, uh, what you have decided, because it came from the Holy Trinity. It came from the Holy Spirit that you are speaking the truth in my name. That's the way we know the truth. To, to be able to get together, all of us together, and that's the strength of the church, and that way we find the truth that God gives it to us. So one day, again, although next, next year, uh, next year, as I said, we're all going to celebrate together, Palm Sunday and Easter together, the East and the West, and then from there again we split and we go this way, we go that way, and, and uh, again, we, uh, who's right, who's wrong, you know, all these uh, debates and all that kind of thing. Well, we should all get together and, and talk about it, really, you know? Who's right, who's wrong? And talk about it and do what we ought to do to be one. One people, one people. But again, people say impossible. Impossible, it's not impossible. This, this church is for 2,000 years we survived and being the truth, keeping the traditions as we keep it, as we have here today. They have it 700 years ago, 800 years ago, about this whole uh, controversy of, of icons and things like that. We, have, we, we, we got together to find out what is really true. Icons are true. They are true that, uh, that we can worship, we can see it, we can feel it. Uh, we, we, it's part of us. Of, uh, we who are Orthodox, not only Orthodox, we're not dealing with icons. Uh, the Roman Church also uh, venerate our icons, and some churches, not all of them, but they do. They still uh, venerate the icons. So that's the whole idea of it. The whole idea of uh, Bosca, Lent, getting together, being able to. Uh, Again, as we said the, the last last week about the forgiveness of sins, we're able to forgive, and to do that, forgiveness means a unity. I, I forgive, you forgive, we're, we're united again. We're united again, we're one, we're one again. We have the strength, the strength, the spiritual strength to, with, to withstand these evil things that go on in the world and go on and on and on. Because, why do they go on? Because we're divided. We're divided. That's why. And, but it says, I think in the, in the, uh, in the today it says that uh, uh, it was in, 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 the, in the divine liturgy. God grants us what we, not what we want, but many times he grants us what we want. And sometimes we want the wrong things, but he would uh, he'll just allow it to happen, and we find the wrong things in our lives. Mostly because we're separated. People try and separate us, try to uh, separate the family. What would happen when somebody comes into your home and says, uh, your, your son is this, or your, your father is that, your mother is this, and your mother is that? To separate, to tear you down. That's what, that's what people try to do. That's the evil. That's evil. No, we are supposed to be united in the world. In the, world, in the church, of course, but then again, to bring the church into the world and to find ourselves where we ought to be, united as one in the Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I hope and pray for the rest of Lent that you all have strength to carry, carry yourselves through uh, to uh, when we sing uh, Christos Anesti, and uh, again, continue our faith uh, in the world uh, to, uh, to again bring the, the, the goodness of God uh, to all of us. And may he bless you all. Thank you.